Hello, and welcome back to the Crime Reel. For today's true crime narration, we shall be looking at the story of Dawn, Alexandra and Janet Griffiths. At around 7am on Wednesday the 10th of January 1990, 20-year-old Dawn Griffiths gave birth to a beautiful, healthy baby girl. The baby weighed approximately 7.5 pounds and had lots of dark hair. This was the first child for 20-year-old Dawn and her partner Jeffrey Harris, who was 24. They named the baby Alexandra. On Thursday, January the 11th, the young couple had spent the day on Grosvenor Ward at St Thomas's in London with their newborn daughter. They were excitedly waiting for Dawn's mother to arrive to meet the new baby for the first time. St Thomas's is a large hospital in central London which has over 800 beds for admitted patients. During visiting hours there are often as many as 1500 extra people within the building who arrive to see their friends and relatives. That evening, as visiting hours in the hospital began, a health visitor arrived to take baby Alexandra for her weight check. The health visitor, Christine, introduced herself to the young couple, apologised for being late and therefore intruding upon visiting hours, explaining that she'd had a particularly busy day. After a brief examination of Dawn's tummy, Christine placed Alexandra into a baby carrier and took her off to be weighed. After around 20 minutes, Dawn and Jeffrey became concerned when the health visitor had not returned. Dawn's mother arrived and said that she hadn't seen anyone outside the ward weighing a baby. The family called a nurse who informed them that there was no one who should be taking their baby for a weight check. Dawn and Jeffrey realised that their newborn daughter had been taken. The situation soon became frantic. The police were called and a description of Christine was issued. She was approximately 30 to 35 years of age, petite, with a slight speech impediment. She had been wearing a dark brown skirt, a light brown blouse and a black leather jacket. Less than 48 hours after giving birth, Dawn was having to give a description of her newborn baby to the police. Alexandra had been wearing a white baby grow with a red collar. It had a Winnie the Pooh motif on the leg. She had also been wrapped in a hospital shawl which had the name of the hospital in red letters in the corner. St Thomas's Hospital is located very close to Waterloo Station in London. It was feared that Christine could have been on her way out of London before hospital security and the police had even been notified of the abduction. The night passed without any further news. However, the following day, Christine called the hospital switchboard to say that she was sorry for taking the baby. This gave the family and the police hope that Christine would return the baby of her own free will. Television and radio appeals followed, but no further contact was made. Looking out of the window at St Thomas's Hospital, Dawn and Geoffrey had the ordeal of watching police search the river for any signs of their baby. As the police investigation continued, a second couple came forward with additional information. On the evening of Alexandra's disappearance, Patricia and Keith Hocking were alone in their private room at the hospital. Their son Charles had been born prematurely on Saturday the 6th of January and was in the intensive care unit. The couple described to the police how a small, nervous woman entered their room on that evening claiming to be a health visitor. The woman talked to the couple for approximately 15 minutes before leaving stating that she had to go to see other patients. Patricia and Keith added more details to the description of the woman. She had short dark hair and was approximately 5 foot 2 inches tall and talked with a London accent. The police believed that when Christine left Patricia and Keith's room she went to a lower floor where she abducted Alexandra. With the details of the baby's disappearance being shown on television and the front pages of national newspapers, the police received details of possible sightings throughout the entire country. Detective Superintendent John Bassett, who was in charge of the investigation, expressed concern that the woman may have had an accomplice and was also investigating the possibility that the baby had been stolen in order to be sold. As time went on, any hope that Alexandra would be returned voluntarily 
began to fade. On Monday, 15th of January, four days after the abduction, police issued an artist's impression of Christine. Despite receiving thousands of calls, they were still no closer to finding out what had happened to baby Alexandra. A special phone line was set up so that Christine could directly contact the police. This soon became inundated with hoax calls. At around 7pm on Friday the 26th of January 1990, the police received details that they thought could be an actual sighting. An estate agent in Burford, Oxfordshire, called the incident room giving details of a woman who had recently been inquiring about houses in the area. Under the instruction of Detective Superintendent John Bassett, Detective Inspector Roger Cousins and Detective Sergeant Gary Kibbe left Hyde Park in a helicopter heading towards Oxfordshire. Upon landing, they met with a local police constable and a doctor. The estate agent had informed them that the woman in question was staying at a holiday cottage housed in a former police station just off of Burford High Street. Just before midnight on Friday 26th of January, the group knocked on the door. A 33-year-old lady by the name of Janet Griffiths answered. Despite having the same surname, Janet was no relation to Dawn. Although initially calm, after police began questioning Janet, she became increasingly distressed. Looking around the property, the police found baby Alexandra in an upstairs bedroom. She was fast asleep and completely unharmed. Dawn Griffiths and Geoffrey Harris, who were staying at a flat near St Thomas's Hospital at that time, were quickly informed and were reunited with their two-week-old daughter shortly afterwards. After two weeks of daily press conferences where the parents appealed for their daughter's safe return, a final press conference with Dawn, Geoffrey and baby Alexandra was scheduled at the hospital for midday on the 27th of January. The press conference was very short and not without controversy. The waiting press scrambled for pictures of Dawn and the baby, and when asked how she felt, Dawn said that she simply couldn't describe it in words. With that, the family left to the annoyance of the gathered press. It later emerged that the family had appointed a solicitor and were selling their story to the highest bidder. This was a move that they were heavily criticised for. The story of Janet Griffiths then began to be told. In June 1989, a couple who were known to the local estate agent in Burford as Mr and Mrs Wasty were inquiring about houses in the area. After a short time renting a flat, they moved to the old police house just before Christmas 1989. The owners of the old police house knew very little of their new tenants other than that they seemed like a normal, respectable couple who were expecting their first child. In reality, the couple were not married and Mrs. Wasty was not pregnant. Lawrence Wasty was a 55-year-old businessman with whom Janet had been having an on-off affair for the previous two years. When the estate agents addressed them as Mr. and Mrs. Wasty, Janet did not correct them as she was desperate to marry Lawrence. Janet had left her husband along with her three young children to be with him. However, Janet and Lawrence's relationship was faltering due to Lawrence's refusal to leave his wife and family. In an attempt to keep their relationship going, Janet had told Lawrence that she was pregnant. Lawrence was shocked by this, as he was aware that Janet had undergone a partial hysterectomy some time earlier. Janet, who claimed to be a nurse, advised Lawrence that the pregnancy was possible due to the fact that she had had a silicon implant. Lawrence believed her. Janet informed Lawrence that they were having a baby girl and that she had to go to St Thomas's Hospital for an appointment in early January. On Thursday, January the 11th, she travelled to London where she bought a baby carrier and made her way to the hospital. After speaking with Patricia and Keith Hocking, she arrived at Dawn's bedside and took baby Alexandra. Janet then made her way to Paddington Station where she phoned Lawrence at his luxury home in the New Forest. She excitedly informed him that she had given birth to their baby daughter at their rented home in Burford that morning. Lawrence agreed to visit as soon as he could. On Thursday 25th of January, Janet had been seen pushing her newborn daughter around the local area in her pram. Suspicions were raised due to her appearance matching that of the now widely circulated artist's impression of the abductor. 
On Friday 26th of January, police received the call from the estate agent and Janet was subsequently arrested. Police questioning was due to start on 27th of January but had to be delayed after Janet attempted to take her own life. She was admitted to the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. The following day, Janet was charged with Alexandra's abduction. If found guilty, she would face up to three years in prison. She was remanded in custody until 12th of February, pending pre-trial medical and psychiatric reports. With further delays for medical assessment, it was eventually determined that she should be committed to a psychiatric facility for treatment under the terms of the Mental Health Act. She would need to remain in this facility until such times as she was deemed fit to re-enter the community. Janet received treatment and was released just seven months later. In 1994, Janet died from cancer. She was 37 years old. As much as Alexandra's return was seen as a happy ending by many, things were by no means easy for the family. From being surrounded by people, suddenly Dawn and Jeff were left alone to get on with life after their newborn daughter. They did not receive any counselling or mental health support. Dawn struggled to bond with Alexandra. She became terrified of something happening to her daughter and couldn't leave the house. She became obsessed with ensuring everything was sterile and struggled to eat or sleep. After the family had sold the story of the abduction to the highest bidder, some members of the press turned against them and additional stories were printed that were either widely exaggerated or just completely untrue. Dawn's mental health deteriorated and by the time Alexandra was two years old, Dawn and Jeff had separated. Within a year, Dawn had attempted to take her own life, believing that she wasn't good enough to look after her daughter. Dawn was finally offered counselling to deal with the traumatic events which she had experienced. This was the first step in her regaining control of her life. Unknown to the critics at the time, Dawn put the money that she earned from selling her story into a trust for her daughter. Despite being labelled a greedy cow for cashing in on this event, Dawn remained living in the same council estate in Middlesbrough and only used the money to give her daughter the best possible upbringing. Small amounts were spent over the years to give Alexandra things that would otherwise have been unaffordable, such as a computer or a new bike. The bulk of the money was used to get Alexandra the best possible education. She attended the prestigious Polam High School in Darlington before going on to study maths at Manchester University. Despite the suffering that Dawn endured in January 1990 and the criticism received afterwards, she had the strength and determination to create a positive outcome from such a dreadful ordeal. That concludes today's story. Thanks very much for listening. Please add any comments down below. So now it's time for petty crime. Okay, so first up today, Susan has kindly sent in a photo of Pie Wacket. He's 12 years old. He's committing quite a felony here. He's climbed into the dryer and happy to sit all over the nice clean sheets. After a severe telling off, I mean really severe, this is now a picture of his reaction to being told off. Nice one, Pie Wacket. Good job. Last week, Zephyr raised his leg to the technology and made things go wrong. You understand this was the dog, this wasn't me. So this is Zephyr, an eight year old Bashund, and the other dog is Shiloh. And we have a before and after. These dogs live in New South Wales in Australia and it's cold in Australia at the moment. So Zephyr likes to get under the blanket if he can. Thanks very much for listening to the Crime Reel. Stay safe, goodbye. In 2011, Alexandra auditioned as a dancer on Britain's Got Talent. She did not however make the judges aware of who she was in fear that it would influence their decision. Goodbye.